Hey guys, Uniservo here. Today we are going to look at some Sage computer stuff. Sage, of course, was a uh, network of extremely large vacuum tube based computers back in the uh, design back in the 50s by uh, MIT, IBM, I think Rand did the software. But basically, well, the quick rundown basically, a military. Uh, air defense network of computers. They, they, they took in video from radar sets all around the U.S. and with the computers processed the data and displayed it to the operators so the commanders could issue commands to intercept their aircrafts because basically, yes, this was air defense in the Cold War during the 60s and 70s to uh, protect, uh, search and protect uh, the U.S. from, uh, well, basically Soviet bombers and Soviet intrusions. Uh, there's plenty of stuff on the web you can, can read up on, on, on SAGE. It's a fascinating system. There's some YouTube videos and such like that. Anyway, uh, today we are going to look at some of the SAGE computer stuff and sort of a, well, just kind of a, a, a look over here. Because right here, we have a module. This is a pull-out module from an IBM-built uh, FSQ7 or 8. There are only minor differences between the 7 and 8. Um, one was a command central, I think, and one was a, basically a, where it sat on the network, I think. Because there were command centrals and uh, the, 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 the nodes, like a leaves on the trees, I think. Um, but uh, yeah, there were not many of these made. There were dual processor machines being they were uh, being vacuum tubes. They were quite unreliable by today's standards. But by by back then, they were actually quite reliable for a vacuum tube machine. But the military, of course, wanted as much uptime as possible. So they had dual processor machines and they could do more or less a hot uh, a hot switch over one of the processors was always on standby. So when you did get a failure, downtime was really quite short. Very, very short for the, for the era. Um, now, uh, pretty much you're not going to find a Sage in someone's garage. Yeah, maybe you'll find a rack, but the, the Sage computers, FSQ7 and FSQ8, were huge, absolutely huge machines and uh, filled with modules like this. So, you know, in case you want a piece of a Sage, FSQ7 or 8, well, here, this is a good video to show you kind of what to look for. Well, most distinctive is the module here. These were plug-in modules, you can see. Here, let's see if we can get the, uh... oops, it's upside down. Okay, come on, focus there. So we got a tag here. Very uh, boring military looking tag there. You know, these, <laughs> these were utilitarian machines. But yeah, as you can see, the, the level, sorry for the, the, the sound of the scraping on the table, but as you can see, very low integration here in that, you know, they, they weren't trying to conserve space with these modules. And uh, because they put these things in gigantic concrete uh, block houses, so space was not an issue. So to make uh, to increase reliability with airflow and such like that, they just made these things kind of oversized. Um, these computers were made, basically made by IBM. And yeah, if you compared this to like a 709 module, 709 module is about a quarter of the size, actually about a sixth of the size. Uh, so, yeah, the, the, these modules just sat horizontally like so and got plenty of airflow. The tubes, as you can see, were very easy to get to. It has this nice aluminum handle. And uh, you can see the way that, uh, here, we'll zoom up a little bit more here. You can see the way it was constructed. Turn it around. You can see it's kind of a sort of a strange way of constructing the module with a sort of pseudo 3D 
way of doing things here. Now these plugged into the racks using very large, fairly unique, uh, I think these are unique to sa the Sage system uh, connectors. And you can see they do, they included a little bit of play here because otherwise, uh, you know, everything had to be so precisely made there's no point in that. So these, these things, uh, to get to them to mate properly. So they gave these things kind of a lot of slop to move around. And all the modules are like this. They all have the slop. So basically you just have to slide the module in and the, well, the, the, the connectors will kind of figure it out themselves and snap into place. Um, let's see. You will notice that uh, one thing you, you, you will see here is that construction is not quite super top quality military spec and uh, yes it is kind of you know very high quality construction but you know since these things had you know sat in a an extremely heavily built concrete bunkhouse they didn't have to make this so incredibly super overbuilt so they they took a pretty good uh a pretty good compromise you know the boards are just this uh you know uh phenolic um you know the 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 resistors they look like allen bradley's let me see if i can show you resistors there we go you know they, they look like allen bradley i mean these are high quality parts and there's no doubt about that you can see the the uh capacitors appear to be uh oops uh like there's uh appears to be Probably a vitamin Q or something like that, or one of those, an Astron, or but one, one of those hermetically sealed jobs. Very lot reliable um, oil capacitors. Um, but, yeah, this is, this is not made like it's supposed to go on an aircraft or a submarine or a ship or something like that. Um, but uh, still very, very well made. See the tubes stick out the top. And one of the interesting things about Sage computers, FSQ7 and 8, and uh, um, also some of the other um, pieces of Sage, <laughs> uh, like I said, it, it was a, a whole system. So there was the computer, like this module comes from, but there were also consoles, there were modems, there were uh, the radios, the radars, and tons of things. They didn't use too many types of tubes, and uh, I have a number of these modules, seven, eight, nine of them, I think. Uh, man, picked those up at the Rochester AWA show like 20 years ago. Uh, wow. Um, but very few types of tubes were actually used. And uh, we can see here, like this guy here. Uh, come out. There we go. This is, well, it's Raytheon, as you can see, but uh, uh, 6414, good old dual triode. It's not quite a 12AX7. It's, 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 maybe you could say like a slightly more powerful 12AT7. I don't know. But, you know, we used, or they used a 6414s a lot. They also used these, these 6888s, which, a bigger tube. These are dual control pentodes. Oh, these tubes haven't been out in probably 50 years. <laughs> but, uh, yep, 6888, um, dual controlled pentode. These were mostly used in pulse circuits uh, and stuff involving uh, the core memory drivers and such like that. Get down in there. And here we'll put you to the side. Because I've got another one here. And you can see, yeah, it's more 6414s, another 6888. But here we have a 7236, which is a high power, oh, wow, look at the corrosion on that one. Uh, high power dual triode, very, very low mu. Something's like three or four or something like that. Um, uh, quite a powerful tube. It's essentially kind of a computer rated 6AS7 uh, dual triode. Um, they were originally intended for power supply regulator uh, shunt service, but 
uh, I think it was Tong, uh, I think Tong Sol is the one that came up with the 7236. They basically computer rated it. And they were used for, in the Sage and in other computers, like IBM's used these. Um, they were used for the core drivers when you wanted to just whack a bunch of current through a wire. These things, these things could handle it. Um, so if you're looking to find a piece of a Sage, these modules come up from time to time. Um, you know, rare occasion I see one at a Hamfester old radio show, and you know, if it's the right price, I'll pick it up. Uh, but mostly, if you want a piece of sage, you're probably going to have to settle on just a tube or a part like that. And uh, the way you <laughs> figure out if... Here, I'll take this. Here's a good example here. To tell if a tube or a part was included in this... A part of a sage mainframe is you look for a number on the tube. And you can see there... Three zero 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 five two eight. That is actually the IBM part number. And uh, what makes it a little odd for an IBM part number is, you know, back in the 50s and 60s, actually way, way up until I think the 80s, IBM part numbers were more or less sequential. They started at one and just kept on going. And occasionally they would do a block. Um, uh, a block of numbers for specific families of parts. You know, if you look at my logo, that's a little SLT uh, SLT module. SLT modules are always three six one something something somethings. Um, in a t in uh, with the Sage system, for some reason they all started their part numbers at three mil uh, the three million mark. Th you know, three zero 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 something 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 whatever. But it's always a seven digit number that starts with a three. Uh, well, it starts with a 300 because they didn't use a million numbers. Uh, anyway, but this goes to other parts too, like here. Just a plain old power resistor. 3001592. Come on, focus you. There we go. You know, it's it's just uh, apparently a hundred ohm resistor, five percent, kind of nothing special, but this was well, it's being unused, so it's probably a, a a spare for a a sage system. Likewise, you know, you can you can even get down to the itty bitty resistors here. Uh, you know, three zero zero one one zero four. Yeah. Okay, there's, there's not much to show, but hey, you can say, hey, this is a piece of a sage. And sometimes even like the tube sockets. Now, this is a uh, one of the CR2 tube sockets for one of the consoles. Uh, this, I don't know if this was for the uh, the, char uh, the Characteron or or what. I, I believe so. But, you know, it's just a standard, standard old style CRT, um, CRT uh, uh, socket. But hey... It's got that magic 3,000 or 3 million number, 3016225. And you can see it's a bigger number, which means it's, it's starting to stray from the central computer. So this was part of a console. Um, but yeah, if, if you want a piece of sage, you're, you know, like I said, you're, never, you're probably not going to find a complete one in a garage. It, it, it ain't going to fit. And um, you know, the, mostly the best you're ever going to do is find a module like this. But if you want something and say, hey, I got a piece of, a, of an old Sage, hey, look for that number. Like here, 307625. Apparently it's serial number five. Uh, I have no idea what this module did. Um, yeah, that's one of the problems with the nitty gritty stuff about uh, Sage computer stuff is there's not much information out there actual real hard information there is some that well you know who you are and you don't want to give it up and give it to bit savers so naughty on you um there's very little actual stuff that's readily available uh as far as like circuit diagrams and such like that because i'd love to find out exactly what this particular module did this is uh three zero eight seven six two five Serial number five. I don't know. 
you know, I just don't know. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this kind of quick look at a Sage module, or actually two Sage modules. Like I said, I've got a couple, well, no, not more than a couple. I'm showing a couple. I've got, uh, I don't know, eight, nine, ten of these things. I traded some of them off. I have uh, gave one to a friend uh, because his, his collection needed some. But, uh, yeah, neat things. They're neat things. Uh, uh, kind of a, a famous computer system. All right, if you have any questions or comments, just leave it in the comments section. Maybe uh, leave a like, subscribe, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I have a Patreon account now, so if you want to uh, maybe give a buck, hey, I would greatly appreciate it. And yes, I'm Uniservo on Patreon. And uh, hey, go back and watch some, some of the older videos. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. See you later. Bye-bye.